Hello there, Amarjeet. So we've got these essays from you. Very nice to see them. Let's take a look and see what you had to say. Okay, marketing internationally is viewed by some as a very effective medium of exchanging knowledge and culture among different countries of the world, while others opine that it invades the privacy of the, maybe recipient country would be better here. While it has its fair share of drawbacks, the benefits accruing from it are manifold. Okay, fine. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> On one hand, uh, international marketing is considered to be a cheap or an expensive sort of reaching out to people around the world. Um, I wouldn't say cheap here, just use. They're essentially synonyms, although inexpensive sounds a little better. This is aided by the internet, which keeps the world united and easily accessible. Okay, um, let's see. Secondly, it is regarded as a medium to expand knowledge of the parties actually doing the trading. The trade reaches, teaches them about different technologies and methods used in making the product by the foreign country. Another major gain that occurs from international marketing is that it opens up business opportunities between people of different parts of the world. Executing some transactions further helps in building strong relationships and links between people. Lastly, it also provides the path of stronger relations between governments of involved countries. Okay, so Amarjeet, what we have here is we have a lot of ideas, but they're not really well supported. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Um, let's see. Here you wrote, this is aided by the internet, which keeps the world united and is accessible. This was one idea that you really just needed to develop a little more. Instead of developing it, though, you went into this secondly. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I guess you could say that you went into a little bit. Then you went to a third argument and just kind of slightly developed it. And then you went into another, a fourth main idea, but didn't develop that at all. So what I want you to do in these essays is to stick to a couple of main ideas, but really kind of flush them out for to develop them appropriately and to develop them fully, okay? It's better to do this than to have like essentially a list um, of, of, of ideas, but not support them at all. Okay, so let's look at your second paragraph here. Admittedly, there are some negative effects of international marketing because it provides the buyer of the subject country with, with up-to-date information. Existing business houses may feel let down by all this. Um, okay, why? The impact could be lower profits and cash flows for these business houses, resulting in a worried trader. However, this situation also propels them to innovate and launch new products to please the customer, as well as to bring their product to international standard. Secondly, um, the countries which have limited or low barriers to entry for foreign players entering their market. Uh, what? No. Secondly, for the countries which have limited or low barriers of entry for foreign players entering their market, this can spell disaster for small businesses operating in the domestic country. Okay. Um, it sounds like you have some information. You have some personal knowledge about this. However, you know what's happening? You're not answering the question. Okay. Remember what the question about international marketing asks you. It says, is it intrusive and invasive? That's the one view, and that's the view that you're supposed to discuss, that it's intrusive and invasive. Did you discuss it here? No, not really. And on the other hand, you're, just, you're supposed to discuss whether it is an inexpensive and necessary form of education, uh, teaching language, ideas, and culture. Did you do that here? No, again, you didn't. So essentially, your answer is off topic. It's almost as if you're discussing the positives of trade in general um, for the business world, as well as the negatives of trade for the business world, and not really answering the question as it has been posed to you. Okay. Um, on the good, on the the good side of this is that a lot of your vocabulary is quite nice. A lot of your grammar is quite good, but you really need to focus on your task response and understanding the question as it is being asked to you. All right, let's move on. In conclusion, while there are drawbacks of international marketing, especially to running business, the benefits coming out of it are much more, whether we talk in terms of better and improved products or exchanging cultures and behaviors across the globe.
Okay. Um, let's see. So, let's see. So here you were talking about the positives, here you were talking about the negatives, but in the end, you felt that the positives were stronger. If that's the case, then this paragraph needs to come second, because we always talk about the side that we don't support first, then we talk about the side that we do support. Okay, this is the appropriate order of paragraphs in an essay like this. Um, so as I said earlier, you've got some nice elements to your writing, but there are some problems in terms of your development and understanding the question. Let's take a look at the other essay you sent us. Okay, so now we go on to your task one, the letter about the English and Homestay program. Let's see what you did here. Sure. Thanks for accepting my proposal for a seven-day stay at your place beginning the night of 26th May through to 2nd June. I would like to share all the details about my stay in UK for the mentioned dates through this letter. All right, so let's talk about a few of the conventions of formal letter writing. First of all, when you get the paper for your general letter, you will see that it will tell you, begin your letter, and then it will tell you what kind of an opening you want. Um, it never will say just, sir. It's always, dear sir, dear dot, 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 something, okay? And just keep that in mind that this is how you begin a letter. Usually, it will be with the word dear. So, this should say, dear sir. And thanks is a little informal. Um, instead, I would prefer if you had made this a full sentence, something along the lines of, I would like to thank you for accepting my proposal, or I would like to express my gratitude um, for your offering to house me for seven days at your home, beginning the night of, the, of 26 May through June, 2nd of June. Um, you're supposed to introduce yourself here. So I would have liked it if you had done that here. My name is Amarjeet Singh. I am a financial modeler by profession working in a MNC based in India. Or I think that would maybe be a little better here because you're supposed to do that straight away. All right. Um, owing to a culture exchange program run by my country, I have been selected for this year's English and Homestay program in the UK. This again is another sentence that probably should have gone right in the beginning. Um, you could have said, for example, um, through the English and Homestay program, like over here somewhere. Okay, about my family background, my father is a retired army officer and my mother is a housewife. Not really relevant, Amarjeet. They never asked you about your parents. Um, I wouldn't even have included it. It looks like your letter is more than long enough. So let's not get off topic. They want you to introduce yourself, but not really your parents' profession. So I would have skipped it. As mentioned earlier, I will be landing on the night of 26th May at 7 p.m. Mm, you know what? Then don't mention it up here. All right, I wouldn't have mentioned it. Rather than repeating yourself, just do it straight away once down here. And then here, again, you could have changed this sentence around to include some of the information you put here. All right, could you please provide me some details on the best mode of transport available from the airport at that time for reaching your home? I would ideally prefer a cheaper transport option because I will have less luggage owing to my short stay there. I would also like to inquire about the meal options that you will be providing to me as a part of the stay. All right, the language here is quite nice. I like that it's formal, it's appropriate, it's accurate, so good. I heard that traveling takes a lot of your time, especially in and around London. I wouldn't say your time, I would have just said a lot of time. I will be traveling to London, central London every day, so please advise me on the best transport options. Lastly, I would also like to buy some souvenirs on my way back to my country. Please let me know any affordable souvenir options that can be explored and also share from where I can get them. I shall be grateful if you can get back to all the questions in this letter. Yours truly, Amarjeet Singh. Okay, um, that's fine. Um, you know, the order of the questions in the letter, while you don't necessarily have to follow them, uh, directly in that order, the order given does actually make sense. So 
Perhaps you should have addressed all of these questions in the middle and then towards the end given your flight arrival and all those questions about how to um, get to the ho homestay's location. All right, now, apart from that, but that's, that's kind of a subjective thing. I'm not going to insist on it. The one thing that I will insist on is, again, your opening, which I already talked about, and, of course, your closing. We need to talk about how to appropriately open and close a letter. I already told you how to open it with dear. Now, because you don't know the name of the person you are writing to, you must finish your formal letter with yours faithfully. It's a convention of letter writing. You have to do it like this. And the people at our IELTS are expecting, that's what they're testing you on basically, that you know this. If you knew the name of the person you addressed him as, dear Mr. Jones, then you could have said yours truly, or maybe even better, yours sincerely, sincerely yours, something like that. However, in this particular instance, if it's dear sir, or to whom it may concern, you have to end it with yours faithfully. All right? So, Armajit, you've got some nice elements to both of your writing, um, some good grammar, some good vocabulary. However, I um, really want you to focus quite a bit on your task response for task two. So I do hope that you'll decide to continue working with us so that we can help you with this. In fact, um, all of the options available here uh, will deal with task response. So no matter which one suits you best, I think you will find that um, lessons and support through us will help you um, attain your IELTS goals. All right, so um, thanks for sending these in. I really hope I get to see more of your essays in the near future. So best of luck to you.